This is Tom Fox. I'm going to take things a little bit differently in today's Hill Country podcast. This episode celebrates my 30th episode of this podcast series, so I thought it would be a good time to reflect upon my 15 months in the Hill Country and doing the Hill Country podcast. The Texas Hill Country is one of the most beautiful places on earth. In this podcast, recent Hill Country resident Tom Fox visits with the people and organizations that make this one of the most unique areas of Texas. Join Tom as he explores the people, places, and their activities of the Texas Hill Country. As I noted in the introduction to this episode, I've now done 30 episodes of the Hill Country podcast with this episode, and I thought it'd be a nice time to reflect back on my time here in the Hill Country, just outside of Kerrville, and what I really learned and enjoyed and grown to love about this part of Texas. The people here are as friendly as any place I've ever been. It really is the best of small town living. The um, people, places, that I've been to have just uh, been a lot of fun. My wife and I have been able to travel around to a lot of the small towns in the Hill Country, uh, exploring antique stores and trying out uh, great diners and uh, burger joints, having some good greasy burgers, and having some fabulous chicken fried steaks. But the uh, people are what really makes uh, the Hill Country one of the most special places on earth in addition to the topography of it. And I've been interested in the different types of topography that you find in the hill country. It can go from rolling farmlands near Fredericksburg down to Rocky Crags in the Kerrville and West Kerr County area up to uh, really an arid high country as you move towards Junction and out towards the Trans-Pecos. It is as beautiful as you can imagine Uh, In the spring, everything is a glorious green, and when the water is running, it's uh, a really beautiful place. The water is a little low because we're in a drought condition, so some of the rivers are down and some of the streams are dried up, but uh, it's still just as gorgeous. Within Kerrville itself, the uh, music scene is really interesting. It is singer-songwriter largely. It's not country-western but more of people's experiences, which I've really come to love. And there is just a ton of music here starting every Thursday. Most restaurants have music, and they are local talent in large part, and they're playing original music. So it's not simply covers uh, that you might hear in other cities. And we really come to enjoy going out to dinner and meeting and listening to some new artists particularly local artists, but uh, there's also a vibrant uh, scene bringing in artists from out of town, of course, anchored by the Kerrville Folk Festival, which recently had its 50th anniversary. It was my fourth time to attend the Kerrville Folk Festival over the years, and uh, Bob Livingston was just a a great person to open the night I saw, as I mentioned with uh, Phil Klazowski, Uh, one of my friends who's also attended the Folk Festival this year. Livingston was uh, one of the performers in the first Kerrville Folk Festival. So that was really a nice uh, bookend for me to see him there. But it reminded me a lot of Austin in the 70s. A great place for music, great place for singer-songwriters, and a great place to listen to music. So... Uh, The music scene here has been something I was not really expecting. Of course, we're about an hour from San Antonio, and we just saw um, Justin Hayward from the Moody Blues. So you get a uh, pretty wide range of music here uh, in the um, Hill Country. I mentioned the topography, and that's what drew me here initially. Going back to my days as a camper at Camp Stewart, I had the good fortune to interview Kathy Ragsdale, uh, the matriarch of Camp Stewart, who, along with her husband, Cy, bought the camp in early 1967, uh, my first year of attending. So I uh, was able to hear about her story, Cy's story, how Camp Stewart came to uh, be in existence. 
and really the history of Camp Stewart going forward. Another great find for me has been uh, Shriner University. Shriner University is a small uh, college here in Kerrville, Texas. I've had the opportunity to meet several professors there. Uh, Mark Tushak talked about admissions and the overall state of the university. Dr. Mark Woodall uh, talked about the MBA program, which is based on ethics with a compliance component. And then, of course, Don Frazier, who heads up the Texas Center at Shriner University. I've had on a couple of times. Uh, Don is one of the few people I've ever met who actually knows more Texas history than me. So we've had uh, great fun visiting over the Texas War of Independence, the days of the Republic of Texas, Texas's uh, move to secession, and the outflow from the uh, Civil War going forward. I've also had the chance to meet with the head basketball coach of Shriner University, Marwan El Rakabawi, or Coach Rock, who started life as a patent lawyer for what became or what used to be called Fulbright and Jaworski. And due to his love of basketball, went into coaching and now coaches at uh, Shriner University. I've also met some really interesting authors. Uh, in this series. Joanne Easley uh, writes a really interesting uh, series for young adults and uh, fiction around her experiences and uh, strong female characters. I also had uh, the chance to visit with Karen Jones, who talked about writing historical fiction. She's originally from Bakersfield, California, but relocated to the Hill Country, and it turns out we live pretty close together as well. And uh, Karen has won several awards and has written in a variety of uh, different eras of fiction in the United States. Another author uh, who was most interesting was John Assetti, who wrote a book entitled Profiles in Leadership. It's his seventh book. And here's the stunning thing about John Assetti. He's 92. Well, when you're still cranking out books at 92, that's uh, pretty good in my book. So um, the author scene in Kerrville has been really interesting as well. Another author who I visited with just outside the Hill Country is Lauren Steffi. Lauren was the business columnist for the Houston Chronicle during the Enron trial. I got to know him back then, but he wrote his first book of fiction during the pandemic called The Big Empty. And it's a book about uh, the experiences in a small Texas town when a big tech company moves in. Lauren and I are going to use that book as a entry to explore a lot of the economic issues facing uh, Texas in 2022. Another fun guest has been Louis Amistoy. Louis Amistoy has a local uh, online journalist presence in Kerrville called The Lead, and he does a daily podcast um, around local issues in Kerrville. So I've had the chance to visit with Lewis about this really new and innovative form of journalism that he is helping lead, as well as some of the issues that have come up from uh, Kerrville uh, local elections. Uh, Interesting character I met was um, Harry Anthony. Harry uh, was in the uranium mining industry for his professional career. So we got to learn about uranium mining in uh, the United States. And then I had uh, Michelle Van Fossen and Laura, excuse me, Leah Oliver, who are both hairstylists. Um, Michelle uh, founded a uh, salon here in Kerrville called Pop Hair Art, and Leah works there. Leah is a painter and views hair as a canvas for her to work. And uh, it was really interesting visiting with her. And for Michelle, she is uh, an actor in Kerrville and does local theater. And it was uh, really interesting to find out about her journey coming to Kerrville. I met with one of the top local lawyers in Kerrville, Craig Walcott, who's been a Hill Country lawyer for about 15 years now. And he talked about practicing law in the Hill Country. I learned about coffee by visiting with Jody Dyer. He runs Courthouse Coffee Roasters, and uh, he provides dry roasted coffee uh, here in Kerrville and the greater Hill Country area. So I learned uh, a lot there, and it was really a lot of fun uh, as well. 
the Western Museum of Art is one of the true gems of Kerrville, and I've visited with Daryl Beecham a couple of times on exhibits that he's uh, had at the museum and had the opportunity to learn more about <clears throat> the Cowboy Artists of America who are headquartered at the Western Museum. Then I'd like to end with uh, a couple of um, guests that really struck me. Uh, the first one was Robbie Clausen, who founded Boston Technology. Robbie uh, is a native curvert, as they call themselves, and went off, uh, joined the Marine Corps, went to fight in the Gulf War, and came back to Kerrville and opened a technological uh, based company, a computer repair service, and it's a great story. And then we had Julia Kardashinsky, and Julia is the cookie lady. And if you haven't listened to Julia's episode, you really should. It was just an inspiring and fascinating journey of Julia's life, how she used faith and baking cookies to get through the grief of her father's death. And now she's got uh, the cookie store here in Kerrville, and she's the cookie lady. It's one of my favorite episodes. It's an award-winning episode as well. So those are just some of the stories that I've been able to explore and tell on the Hill Country Podcast. I hope you'll join me again uh, after we take a short break for the week of July 4th, where we come back with uh, more stories about the Hill Country, Kerrville, and its surrounding environs. This podcast has been a passion project for me, and I've just developed an even greater love affair with the Hill Country. I hope I can continue to share this with you as well. I love telling stories, and the Hill Country podcast is designed to do just that. If you have a story you'd like to tell, I'd love to sit down and visit with you. Please contact me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com, and I'll sit down and visit with you for an episode of the Hill Country podcast. The Hill Country podcast is designed to tell the people, places, and things that make this the most unique part of Texas. The Hill Country Podcast is a production of Compliance Podcast Network.